Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the Mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah. This the show you need an end. It ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crush us wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crush us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crush us. Let's go. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke the Dumpster. Drosy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is going to be the cheesiest podcast, the cheesiest spotlight I've ever done. Yeah, you can tell. We're going to talk a lot about cheese. I'm actually excited about this because I need more knowledge in cheese. I'm going to have the world's cheesiest professional wrestler, Big Daddy Cheese, come on and talk on the spotlight today. Super excited. I don't care that he wrestles. This guy actually loves cheese. And I'm, I don't know, I'm a generic cheese guy. I want to know more. I know about the the good cheeses out there. I just don't know like where to get them or uh, the, the taste flavors and sensations you're supposed to have around them. Listen, provolone Swiss, I'm good with. I, I like those. Uh, Monster, I'm good with. You know, I, I don't like American cheese. Yeah, this is going to be a wrestling podcast that talks about cheese. So I'm super excited to have Big Daddy Cheese come on the show. Ruining it right off the bat because I know... What's going to be Gouda for me is Gouda for you, right? Yeah, I don't know. I I hope he has better puns than that. I really do. Before we get to the interview, we got to do our due diligence. And it is. Collar and elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and his hooligans have down there at Collar and Elbow. Thank them for sponsoring us. Season 7 continuing to be a sponsor. This is awesome. We love them. And they have an amazing merch. And merch, one merch, all the merch, everything they have. Listen, I have my Dusty Rhodes shirt on right now. My good brother's, you know, sweats, and I'm ready to go. That's the way I rep when I'm uh, getting set to do interviews. I throw it on just because I'm that cool. If you guys want some stuff, check out collarandelbow.com. And when you buy all your products, Use the promo code CANCRUSHERS. All one word, capital C and CAN, capital C and CRUSHERS. You'll save 10% and you'll help out the podcast as well. So yes, how about that? That's awesome. You know where to find us. On Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Slide into our DMs if you'd like to be part of the show. We love having wrestlers come on the show. We're going to tell you how the big cheese, the big daddy cheese, the cheese master hooked up with us. So, uh, yeah, so super excited about that. He slid into a DM. He was cheesy and slimy and salty and, yeah, I don't know. I, I This is going to go downhill fast. Uh, you can also email us, cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Guys, you can hear us everywhere podcasts are. Really, really. Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Amazon, Ask Your Alexa. It, it, the list goes on and on. Thank you for the support, and we love it. Continue to like, follow, and share, rate, and all do all that cool stuff because it really, really, really helps us out. Yeah, uh, we did take a down tick in ratings recently in Thailand. We we dropped like five spots in Thailand. So, guys, we need some help. Get us back up over in Thailand and everything like that. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I I, I get them every week. I don't know. I don't know why people hate us in Thailand now. I don't know. All right, here comes Al to tell you more about Collar and Elbow. And then we come back, Big Daddy Cheese. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. 
the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is Julia Lynn, a.k.a. The John Peace, and you are listening to the best podcast ever, the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Guys, I told you how excited I was, and it's going to be cheesy podcast time. He's going to have a lot of puns. I had a couple that are probably bad, but listen, this is the world's cheesiest professional wrestler, Big Daddy Cheese. Welcome to Can Crushers. How the hell are you doing? I'm like overexcited today. Brother, if I was any better. Here they come. I would be cheese triplets. I am your Gorgonzola rock and roller. I am your Sultan of Swiss, the amazing Asiago, the Havarti heathen, recently Big Daddy Cheese, the American Cheese, baby. I am the cheese and i'm happy to be here on the can crushes podcast baby i've been listening to you for a while i can't wait to talk to you i'm glad that you had me on i'm excited we're gonna fourth wall down boom here it comes listen guys i didn't know who the hell cheese was he reaches out to me (laughs) i'm not gonna lie to people he reaches out to me he's like dude how the hell you are i saw i saw you almost died a couple weeks ago i'm like yeah, I'm like, thank you. That means a lot. I mean, our our paths have not crossed, right? Not at all. Not, not at all. all. But it just means you know, you're a human being. I'm a human being. You just reach out and you're like, how you doing? You know, you just the the picture from my, when I was in a hospital. I cried before I answered you. So that's me. Oh, it means a lot. So thank you. Uh, you know, it's it's basic human decency, and it's it's one of those things where you're like, I follow you guys on Instagram. Um, shout out to Can Crusher's podcast and Instagram. Um, at at Can Crusher 69. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, I've had, I've had some people who have po- I've crossed paths with been, been on there. And of course, when you follow, like I'm, I'm an engaged follower. So if I see that a podcast, an entity, a person, a fellow uh, pro wrestler has posted something, I, you know, I'll, I'll react to it. Sometimes they'll never see it. And to be honest with you, I, I didn't expect you to respond at all. You like, cause I, I, this is how I operate. I try and put something out there good, you know, and I'm not like trying to Tony Robbins. Yeah. I'm not trying to <laughs> put on a facade. Like this is, this is me. This is who I am. This is how I do it. This is how I roll. But I try to put something out there. Good. And if something comes back, then that's a huge bonus. But the worst case scenario is that, you know, I just put something good out there. That's it. And I saw that you were in the hospital and I saw that you had a couple of posts after that. And I, and, um, I just I just recently became a father. And so I've learned that, you know, life is precious. Um, and it's important to check on people. And when people check on uh, my wife, a.k.a. the Cheezette, um <laughs> Baby, After she's, baby Swiss. Yeah, Baby Swiss, Baby Bell is her ring name. Uh, but <laughs> but when, when people check on us, it's like, oh, how, 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 how's the baby doing? Uh, bet you're tired, all that. Yes, all true. But when people ask about my wife, and, and they ask me how she's doing because, uh, you know, she, she's the one who did all the work. That's something that means the world. So you, you're, there's no way that I think that if – as a fellow human being, first and foremost, there's no reason that we can't just check on each other, whether I know you or not. Now, some people might take it weird because people don't typically do that, but I wanted to, I'm glad you're doing well, but I, I, I honestly was not expecting to be on the podcast. I'm just oh, that super is, happy. Yeah, then I shot my shot and I'm like, dude, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Uh, how, why don't you say this on the podcast? Just the gloat a little bit. And here yeah. you are. So, yeah. And I did some research. Don't get me wrong. 
And I'm like, oh, my yeah. God, this guy's going to be full of puns. I can't wait to have him on the show. I'm going to freaking fast forward him to the straight of the line. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, but the puns are my favorite. Like, I'm, you know, as I gave with you with my intro, I've, I've, I've had to, like, I've done, I've done those so many times on when I'm cutting a promo where I'm just like, I have to kind of, I, I don't know, I need to do like a, a real, where it's just like a sped up version of what I say as my intro, because right. I've, I've, I've just every time and people are like, just do your thing. Like I, I was just as an example, not to Bogart all the time here, but that, it's like your I, time. It's your spotlight. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear about Mark. <laughs> oh, come on. There's plenty of people. You got, you got some really, uh, Mark fanatics out there, I'm sure. I, but I do some creepers too. By the way, I love you too, creepers. But go ahead. Yeah. But no, I, I, um, I, I, I partnered with a a local. Um, I live in I live in Florida uh, near the beach in St. Pete, and I partnered with some local guys who are just doing this waterway and beach cleanup thing, and I. I'm also a small business owner and, you know, I use that as an opportunity to help them with the tools that I have with my small business, let them use a trailer to get rid of some trash that they picked up from the beach area and stuff like that. And they, the, a lot of people out on the street, your regular working people, like they haven't experienced pro wrestling at all or in a long time. And so, so true. Yep. Right. I mean, we live we as pro wrestlers, pro wrestling fans. We live in this bubble where you're just kind of like, OK, everybody knows about wrestling. Everybody knows the lingo. Everybody's hip to this. Everybody's hip to that. But like you're you're if you walk around somewhere and you talk to somebody just off, like literally off the street, odds are they're going to look at you like pro wrestling. And then some synapses fire in their brain and they're thinking of like they're thinking of your classics, like your Hulk Hogan's or some, some of them will get, you know, confused and be like, Oh yeah. Like the fighting, like the MMA stuff. And it's like, yeah, but not, uh, and then you just kind of give up and you're just like, yeah. Yeah. But, that um, he did that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, back to my, my story, the, this one, uh, this group called divers down pollution projects, super interesting, uh, really cool group of guys that just got together they gathered up volunteers and they just wanted to clean up the beach over here and i'm like shoot i'm down with that and so you know i I go to help them out and they're just like hey do you want to record a video so we can post it on our social media and i was like oh yeah they were like really and i was like yeah and um they're like okay we're here with the cheese and you know it's just like it's going to be your basic stock video like we cleaned up the beach today. We did a couple of things and blah, blah, blah. Cheese, do you have anything you want to say? Yeah, I'm the, it's the cheese. The Golden Soul Rock and Roller. The Soul Town of Swiss. And we're here to clean up the beaches here in Tampa Bay and all over Florida, baby. What are you going to? And then, like, the camera shuts off and they're all just, like, losing their minds. And it's a normal like day for us. We're like, oh, you, yeah. you, you, you drop the ball on the brother. You need to get more brother. And they're like, what? <laughs> These kids are like, they're like, they're like, they're like, you're so calm and, and like normal. But then as the cheese, you're not calm and you're not normal, but it's really good. And we like it. And I'm like, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> This is my real life. This business owner and everything, this is what I, uh, you know, I hide it in the closet. I love being the cheese. If I could be the cheese 24-7, that's what I am. A hundred percent. That's like, I, you know, talk about, people talking about living the gimmick. That was the gimmick. Like me, the, the me as a person walking around with my small business and, and doing the things that I do. Not as a family man, as a fa- you know, family is v- the most important thing to me. But like, that's the gimmick, right. you know. Is like the day to day stuff is the gimmick. The real me is like when I get to be the cheese and you know, make all the puns, slap guys in the face with cheese, you know, come up with really crazy, you know, sounding finishing moves and you know, make silly videos and all that stuff. That's. And we're that's getting, and we're getting to all that. <laughs> we're getting to all of that. 
We got to do g- g- the generic things first because I like to know your background and and all of this. So how would you meet your what? No, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Who introduced you to wrestling as you know, little cheese Swiss or you know, mom, dad? How did you find wrestling? Uh, so this is uh, you know, it's my favorite part of it is that I was um, introduced to wrestling by my my maternal grandparents. Um, back, yeah, my, my grandmother, um, who I affectionately referred to as my nanny and my grandfather, who I also affectionately referred to as my papa, you know, they were like the best grandparents in the world. They lived very close to us. Obviously, by the time I was born, they were both retired, but they had lived these very full lives that, you know, they'd run restaurants and things like that. My grandfather was, um, he was a man's man. Like I can, you know, I can put on all the bravado that I want as the cheese and body slam somebody twice my size and drop a, you know, cheesy elbow on them. But that guy makes me look like I'm just a puff of cheese dust. I mean, he, he was a, is a world war two veteran. He was a purple heart recipient. He was a coal miner. Um, originally from West Virginia and he worked, a, had a really hard scrabble life. Like he, he just had to work for everything he ever had. And that was the same thing for my grandmother. So they, um, they loved wrestling and I, since I spent so much time with them, I loved wrestling and, you know, Sting was my, was my grandfather's favorite. And so Sting became my favorite. Surfer um, Sting. Always, we're, say, we're saying surf, Surfer Sting, right? Surfer Sting, just post Blade Runner Sting. Like okay. we're talking early Surfer Sting. Clash yeah. of the Champions like, era. Exactly. Yeah. Like, That's the number Clash one sting in my book. Fatal encounter. Like it, it just like all the stings of yesteryear that ha- you just look back on with nostalgia. So I watched wrestling when my with them all the time, nonstop. Uh, but when when my grandfather passed away, my grandmother and I kept watching it together because it made her feel close to him. And um, it it just was one of those things that it just stuck with me for life. Um, there was a brief hiatus as one does when you get into adolescence, but it wasn't because I got. Uh, I was super into all the normal things I was, you know, girls and, you know, just sports and all this wonderful stuff that you kind of go through. But like (laughs) my brother and I would always fight. He's about five years younger than I am, but we'd always fight. When he got big enough to fight me, he would always want to fight me and always want to pick a fight. He'd always do it when it was wrestling time. Of course. And I'm trying to watch. (laughs) Right. I'm trying to watch Nitro and this kid comes in here and he's wanting to, he turns off the TV. Strike one. I hate your brother. Sorry. Strike one. (laughs) We are talking Monday night wars peak. We are talking NWO. We are talking Hollywood Hogan, Crow Sting. I know some people don't like calling him Crow Sting, but you know, that's That's what it was. That's what it was, you know? So like, and he turns it off just trying to pick a fight with me. So I took a I took a chair. It was a small, it was a small little tykes plastic chair. So just so everybody can know I'm, I wasn't a violent person back then. But uh, I took a small chair that was our there's three of us. We had a younger sister. And I took one of her little play chairs and I clocked him over the head with it. And it would just Typically, I could do something like that and make a loud noise and tap him a little bit, and he would just leave me alone. Well, you probably concussed the hell out of him. Those little tight things are, sol- are solid. They really were, and I, I gave him a little bit too much credit for being soft. But the worst thing that could have happened was when my dad walked in at that very moment. Oh. And, and he sees me hitting the chair, and then he looks at what's on the, you know, because I had turned the TV back on because we my brother and I were jawjacking back and forth. He sees that wrestling's on the TV. He's like, you're copying this stuff. Uh, no more wrestling. So wrestling was banned in our house for like, 
two years. So I missed like, uh, don't get me wrong. I would sneak off to my grandma's and would watch wrestling with her. But I, I missed like some vital moments in wrestling as a kid. And uh, thankfully for tr- tape trading and like being able to tape stuff and, and uh, now the libraries we have, being able to go back and rediscover things, I can get those memories back. But yeah, it was it was banned for a, a while, and um, but then I, it came back around, and it just stuck with me. And uh, so that's that's the origin story of uh, <laughs> a that's... young Swiss cheese getting being, being uh-huh. loving wrestling. <laughs> I love all. First of all, anytime that it's grandparents, because that's where I got mine. Like my grandfather, he, everybody in the family knew he was deaf, but him, he would have, if you're outside a mile away, you could hear my grandmother's TV. And it's one of those old, big tube TVs that it sounds like you're at a rock concert. Yeah, he had that on. So, you know, NWA back in the day was on and you could hear Ric Flair or Tommy Rich or anybody coming in and you're like, oh my, my grandmother hated it. LJ, turn it on or put your hearing aids in. Well, boom, I'm now just, don't go watch that with Grandpa, so I'm watching it with Grandpa. I, I'm that kid. I'm an, an idiot. All of that. <laughs> it, essentially the same story that you had, we did with my best friend. We're at, he could probably tell you the exact pay-per-view. We're it up at his house pay-per-view, small, maybe 24-inch TV, shit's going awry. We're just tussling. Somebody's head ends up through the drywall. His mother no. his mother walks in the door as the head is in the drywall. Mm-hmm. Above his mom's and dad's pizzeria, 30 boys just thrown out. Get the hell out of He could never host pay-per-view again. So they all became at my house then. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, well, I, I, I mean, at some point, I need to hear more about this pizzeria, this magical pizzeria. Oh, that was... yeah. I just, I to fly <laughs> some pizza down from, uh, from Pennsylvania to Florida. We'll make that happen. Okay, okay. So you kind of filled in some of the other lines I wanted to know. So when you get the oh my god, the aha moment, you know, after sports and no wrestling, and that you're signing up for this, you're going to be in the business. Well, uh, I was a fairly aged piece of cheddar before I even. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> you like it? Yeah, I, do. I got you. I got you. Uh, but yeah, no, I was. It was something I'd always wanted to do, and for, and uh, you know, and I don't want to bring anything down, but you know, people we we talked about humanity and things like this in the beginning of the podcast, but. As a as a young man in my twenties, I was living my life for other people. Now, I have no issues with people living in like if they want to live a life of servitude, if they want to live a life to protect their family, if they want to do whatever you want to do with your life, you have free will, you have autonomy. But for, it wasn't for me. But I couldn't see a way to get out of it. What I mean by that is. I was working jobs, I was working government jobs that were just bogging me down and I was just doing them to pay bills and I, you know, relationships I was in, I was taken for granted and I was just a guy who was just, I, I was just, I wasn't going with the flow. I was, uh, I was going with somebody else's flow. I was paying for somebody else's mortgage. I was living someone else's dream. Like treading water, it sounds like essentially. Treading, it's, it, exactly. It, I was treading water, and um, and I was told I shouldn't do these things, and I was kind of chastised for like having you know tr- thinking outside the box. And and again, that's 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 on me. I made those conscious decisions. I was scared. Um, I've never been shy. I've never had an issue talking in public. I've never had an issue with physicality or anything like that. But I, I just, I woke up one day and it was after I quit the government job. I, you know, it's like, I quit the government jobs. I stopped being government cheese. There you go. There's another one. And uh, cheese. <laughs> so I quit the, 
I quit the uh, uh, government jobs and, and started my own. And, and actually, before I quit the last government job I did, I was um, I started training. But I, I the aha moment was just like I was at a, a wrestle a WrestleMania. And it was when they were in New or- one of the last times they were in New Orleans. And it was. Um, uh, they had WrestleCon there. Right. And there was uh, a booth there for uh, Jay Lethal's school down here in Florida. And I just out of curiosity, I just went over and talked to the guys. And one of uh, both guys are my friends. Uh, one of the guys is like been like a mentor to me business. And um, uh, he's been like a partner, business partner. He's been a, he's traveled down the road with me. We've worked together in the ring. We've, you know, all this stuff, his name's RJ and he'll, he'll hate that I'm saying anything bad about him because his gimmick is he's the scoundrel. Um, but he has a very successful, uh, YouTube channel and, um, he, he does reselling and he's a full-time reseller now and he's living his dream. He quit his job and he's now living his dream. And I think he does a little bit of wrestling on the side here every now and again, but he stays pretty busy. And, um, so I just, I, all I said, I was like, I was like, ah, man, I don't know, guys, I'm in my thirties. What am I supposed to, what am I going to do? You know, maybe I can be a referee or a manager. And they both looked at me and they're like, you know, I'm not like the, I'm not, you know, Andre NBA level size, but I'm, I'm fairly decently sized guy. Yeah, you're a tall and guy. Just like, yeah. Compared yeah, to five, eight me. Yeah. You're tall. <laughs> they're like, they're like, nah, man, you, you, you if you're a manager and you're bigger than the guy you're managing, it's not going to look good. If you're a referee and you're bigger than everybody in the ring and on the, where we are in the Florida indie circuit, um, I'm, I'm a little bit bigger than, than most of the, of the ones that are out there. You've got a lot of quick guys and a lot of, you know, really built guys, but they're not a lot of, you know, just like big. And I pride myself on this. Um, I, I have the look of like a, an eighties wrestler. I've got my gut. But I also have the shoulders to prove that I can carry you around and yes. throw you around when I need to. <laughs> but um, but they said no, you know, just try it out. And finally, you know, just I I just went, you know, I went uh, and signed up and and committed to it and trained under Jay Lethal. Um, How amazing was and, that, by the way? I've always uh, and not just because you're on here and if he's listening, yeah. cool. But I've been a Jay Lethal fan from. Before the woo off, do you do you imagine there was yeah, Jay yeah. Lethal before the woo off when him and AJ you, were ripping the house down? Yeah, Jay Lethal's me, been amazing. He he, and he's and he's that much better of a human being. I mean, like, I, I've only been let down a couple of times in the wrestling business. Of you know, you meet your heroes, and and I won't say who, but you know, you meet your heroes, and they're just like. Yeah, uh, you don't. You realize. Uh, I realize why they say never meet your heroes because yep. you can be disappointed. But Jay Lethal not only exceeded expectations, but he was. He's a. He's a kind man, and he's a good friend. He's he supported me. He supported my gimmick. He supported my business, and he he's always tries to help his students. He you can, and this isn't an indictment on any wrestling school um but you you do hear horror stories where guys will go and train or they'll pay a lot of money up front to go to the this wrestling school or that wrestling school and uh somebody famous is on the logo and they'll say oh you know basically they never see that person you know whoever's school um i i can say with certainty and it's currently doing now because I go and I still train there. Cause you never, I'm a, I'm not the best wrestler in the world, but I am a student of the game and I still go and train with him. Um, but he still does this. He's still, he's got a contract and he's working select indie dates and he's still there training people like during the week. That says he a lot wants, that he, he wants, you know, listen, you're not the youngest cheese at the factory right now. <laughs> I'm going to try getting some of these in as well. But he wants you to do your best, and he wants the rest of the you know little cheeses to do well as well. So this is – you have his name attached to you as well as everybody else there. He, he doesn't want 
you guys would all make him look like a schmuck, right? That's true. That's true. So, it, but it, it's also that he gives you a. I, I just remember, uh, you know, this one promo where this one kid was really, really nervous. You know, that was seemingly that was the hardest part. Like the promo part for me was easy because I got a big mouth. I've always loved talking. <laughs> <Good> and tell. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> easy, pal. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're, but, we're not going to uh, be friends after this all of a sudden. No, <laughs> no absolutely. we're going to be better friends. But the, he, I, it's not everybody, but a lot of people, when you're coming up and you're unsure of yourself, as I was just treading water as a young man, you, you're you unsure of yourself and you're worried about the embarrassment. You're worried about looking like an ass or you're, lo- or you're worried about looking like this or like that. And it just... You just kind of, um, sorry, there's a plane flying overhead. Um, deplay, you, deplay. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, Fantasy Island. Sorry, <laughs> but but you, uh, you, you sometimes people are unsure of themselves, and and it's typically when they're a little bit younger and they they're not quite as experienced at life. And um, I just remember whenever we were do, getting to the part of training when it was coming to all right. You need to learn how to do promos. You need to learn how to advertise yourself. You need to learn how to talk about your next match and all the important parts of the psychology of a promo. And uh, as we both know, Jay is a master at that as, as his very characters that he's been in the business. And um, there was this one kid that was super, super nervous, like so nervous he was shaking. And, and Jay just like Jake, turns from like when we're training he turns from like coach style jay lethal like really you know fundamentally sound very athletic you know everybody can you know everybody can do this that was one of his things he's like anybody you know anybody can learn this part this part it's just putting them together correctly and learning what to say but this kid was so nervous Jay just turns into this big teddy bear and he's just like, tell me who your favorite wrestler is. And he started asking him these really kind of leading questions and got him to the point where he, he cut his own promo that uh, this guy did. And um, it just, it was one of those endearing moments that I just know, like, I'm proud to call Jay a friend. Like he's, he's my mentor. There's respect there. He's still Jay lethal. Cause I never, <laughs> anytime I talk to him, I'm always like Jay lethal. You know, I never, I never just say casually Jay. I always call him I Jay just Lethal. Use the full thing, Jay Lethal. You know, and he, um, he kind of gets a kick out of it. He laughs at me, but he, it, it's just an amazing moment to see how great of an of a teacher he is. I mean, he really like. I think honestly, if he were to not, because he belongs in professional wrestling, he's an institution. Yeah, but if he were not a pro wrestler. He could have, if he was selling insurance, he would go in and he would teach you the fundamentals of selling insurance and be able to put on trainings and all that kind of stuff for it because he is that good at training people and leading you to the right spot. So um, train at his school, and I'll give you the the origin story of the cheese if you want that, if that's in your line of questioning. It is. I wanted to know uh, one other thing. Uh, yeah. before the cheese comes along too. What was your hardest thing? Because clearly we, we know promos and talking and everything right up your alley. What was the hardest thing being a little bit older? I'm not knocking you for that, but being a little no, bit no. older, getting into it, was it the psychology? Was it the running of the ropes or the, the bumps that are just, listen, normal people don't throw themselves on the ground. Was that rough? Okay. So, yeah. So, and it's yes still, to all of that. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. It's a, it's like a yes and situation, but I, I would say, um, not necessarily the psychology. Um, I can, I feel fair, confident in my ability to tell a story in the ring, but the, I think the biggest thing was putting a sequence of moves together where it just, didn't look I didn't look like an idiot you know what I mean yeah like yeah it, I mean, because a drop kick into a headlock into another yeah well, you know just mashing stuff together everybody were like what the hell is this guy doing right there's no flaw that, correct that that and basically any chain wrestling like <laughs> right. like 
my my but uh, my friends in the business love to make fun of me because like oh like, yeah you're never gonna see chain wrestling in a cheese match because you know cheese doesn't chain wrestle and it's like yeah so what did you do you want to see macho man chain wrest i'm not comparing myself to him but like i'm saying like do you want to see Hulk Hogan chain wrestle? Do you even no. want to see Sting chain wrestle? No, no. you want to see their greatest, what became Cena? their no. greatest hits. Yeah. No, yeah. no, you don't want to see. Yeah, like everybody. And here's the thing. Uh, all, the, all the extra big moves and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot bigger when you do it less. And the old adage, less is more, yep. really, really, really applies here. And so, yeah, like putting together sequences of moves and all that kind of stuff. It was that those were really the bigger things to me, man. Like, and yeah, the physicality was a little bit tougher on me. I'm fairly tough. You know, I'm, I work, I have a, f- a physical, um, I have a physical job because I run a business. Like it's a property maintenance business and I do a lot of moving around and stuff. So I always stay fairly strong, but. It's just, a different strong. I mean, it's a different type of strong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people are always like, hey, "You should be pretty strong from garbage." Yeah, I can throw yeah. garbage, but I'm not going to be able to lift up, you know, Andre the Giant. It's it's a different body <laughs> movement, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's it is it's all it's all different, and I think I think part of that too. The one of the bigger things for me was that I would I would think too much. Um, Cause I, I always try and think two moves ahead and I'm not talking about wrestling moves, but in life, I always try to think two moves ahead, which is where as a source of anxiety, but, um, ding, 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 I, ding. <laughs> it's a wrestling within I, itself, but yes. Yeah. This is like a therapy podcast at this point, but, um, oh, by the way, Dr. Uh, Phil is my next guest, <laughs> but no, I, um, I, I don't, I try and think two moves ahead and I, and you try and do that in wrestling. You have to be very, 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 very good to, in order to do that. And wrestling has really taught me that you have to slow down and you have to take things one at a time or give things one at a time. And I've kind of as poetic as that sounds and as rehearsed as that sounds, it's true. I've, I've had to do that in life as well. Okay. So, so before we get to the cheese, one, one more thing. Yeah, yeah, girlfriend, wife, all involved. You know, prior you getting into wrestling or after you get into you know, what I, I don't need to know the gist and all of that. But when you tell family members I'm getting into wrestling, you know, does dad rewind? Oh, that damn little tykes chair is back to bite him in the ass. Like, <laughs> what does everybody say about that, Dad? I okay, so I really. You didn't tell you know, anybody it, until the first match, right? You're going to tell me that. You, you, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Did you, you've heard the the phrase "move in silence." Mm-hmm. I, I moved in such silence that nobody even saw it coming until I did my first social media post on the whole deal, and um, I told a very, very few select people that I was training. And then when I had my first match, it was bam, pow. And then it was on the, on the internet and, and it was on social media and then people were coming out of the woodwork. But like, I would say on average, you know, I get nine out of 10 support. Everybody's just like, yeah, yeah great. Yeah. And, and my wife has been very, she met me as a wrestler because she, she, she likes is, cheese. She she loves cheese. That's why we had a baby. But right. uh, but she she's been very. She's like my source of constant, uh, undying support because she met me when I I had already I had become the most me I've ever been. So understand that that if you learn anything during this podcast, those last couple words, becoming you is number one. I'm not saying for you or for me. I'm just saying for anybody listening, that's in general, become yeah. your number one. I just gave me shivers, man. I love you. Mm. I really do. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I didn't expect, I really, too, really, that's really, great. really. All right. Who is, why is, tell me about the cheese. 
<laughs> Where the hell did this come up with? And it, it fits you. Again, I don't know you worth Adam, but yeah. this is you. Well, I appreciate that. And it, it does, it, it really works and it's continued to work, but there's uh what I was talking about earlier with Jay lethal and the, the promo piece of uh, this wonderful, beautiful business of pro wrestling. We had that and it was my turn and I didn't have any, again, I didn't have any issues, but I also know that if I rehearse too hard, then it's going to, because we, we knew the promo day was coming. Right. Right. So you had a little bit of time to prepare. And, um, I, I'd been saying promos in front of the TV since I was a tiny little boy. I was a little curdling, you know, <laughs> and, uh, I keep dropping them on. You I know I you keep getting me. Soundbite. You don't hear it. <laughs> But, because I'm but, listening. Uh, I want to know about you, and you do <laughs> shit like that. As, as I pull the old switcheroo on you. Yeah. No. Uh, we're doing the we're doing the we're doing the promos, and, and Jay's there. Uh, Jay Lethal, and uh, and he's he's listening in. And do you know? Are you a Saturday Night Live fan? Yeah. At all? Yeah. Of course. So the classic Chris Farley. Matt Foley, a motivational oh, speaker, yes. living in a van down no, by the river, going through and, tables with the jacket. Yeah, yes, and then he, and he's like, and you and you're living on a steady supply of government cheese. So I, as as Jim Cornette says, I borrowed. You know, I didn't steal. I borrowed, and I. Um, I said, uh, you know, every, why does everybody in this room? And I wasn't saying anything about the cheese. I wasn't the cheese at this point. I was just, I was just regular old you, t- me, um, as a person. Uh, and I, but I was cutting a, a a bad guy promo, a heel promo, as we say in the business. Wow. And uh, I, uh, I, I said, why does everybody in this room? look and smell like they're on a steady supply of government cheese. And that was kind of the end of the promo. Uh, you know, I, 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 from there and then Jay, everybody in the room seemed to like it. Jay seemed to like it. It kind of made him chuckle a little bit. And he just says to me, says, that was good, but why are you, why are you so mad at that government cheese? <laughs> <laughs> he said you were so passionate and so angry at that government cheese and so then he started calling me government cheese and then he got tired of the government and dropped it and he just st- started calling me cheese and from there i i wasn't just cheese anymore i was the cheese and the i ran i i looked in the mirror and i said this is this is who i am i'm the cheese i'm the cheese <laughs> And I, I ran with it, man. I, I just, I got a, I got, I had just got my first tattoo on one of those things you're talking about that I always wanted to do. I, I'd gotten it all over my left shoulder and all the way down my arm. And I got another one. The second one that I got was a big slice of, of, uh, of cheese. And, um, so I was just like, I went for it. I, I was like, and if I, and if this whole thing I, I, doesn't work out and I don't get to wrestle even one match, then I have a really cool story with this tattoo. Right. Um, <laughs> but it did. Cause I, and, and here's another fun fact. I only planned on working one match. Like I just wanted to ever, ever. I just, I just wanted to, it was a, it was a find myself moment, man. It was a, it was a, it was a big, it was a big purchase on, on betting on myself and who I was and who I, who I am. Like I said, I'm more me than I've ever been in my entire life. And the cheese is a huge, huge part of that. And as the cheese, you know, I, I went from one match, which I quietly, you know, shed a tear and, and celebrated because I did it. I devoted that privately to my, you know, um, dearly beloved grandmother and grandfather yep, who I knew that still was pro wrestling in me. Yep. And they were, it was, it was for them. And, but then it, then it was almost as if, 
and not to get like uber spiritual or woo woo or anything on your podcast, but it's no. almost as if do it. Dude, they, I love it. They, <laughs> it's almost as if they were like, no, don't just do it for us. It's great that you did, but keep going, son. And here I am, you know, almost got almost four years later. And, um, I'm, you know, through a pandemic and through, a, a child, a child. Yeah. And, and, st- and beginning of a business and, 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 and again, just continuing to find myself and find who I am and not just who I am, but who I'm going to be. I, you know, the cheese has been at the epicenter of that. You and, were going um, to bust your ass and train so long for one match. Talk about dedication and love. It's a, that's a love for the business in my heart, too. Because that's craziness. One match and then I'm done. People. I know. Not a lot of people know that. Like, um, I, I, I don't, uh, it's not something I, I'm, uh, I've, I've talked about it maybe one other podcast and with one other person about it, but that I, I've only, not a lot of people know that about me. I just, I wanted to do it to check that box but not only check that box, but check it in a way that was honoring two people who sacrificed a lot of their adult time to spend with me as a family so we could watch, you know, Sting. Old, we could watch Sting. We could watch WCW because I was a WCW guy for sure. Don't get me wrong. I had, I switched the channel to WWF, but. It was mainly WCW and, you know, before that it was the NWA, what we could get regionally. Right. That's, but, uh, uh, that's an amazing story. That's, a, we're going to shift gears. We're going to, we're going to step away from wrestling a minute and get on to some other things, then come back to wrestling. So we're, we're going to take you. time. My son can walk home. I don't care. Whatever. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> hey, did you know that you're in a, in a game, a wrestling game, uh, like a card game. Do you know this? A, a card game? Yeah. Look up. You clearly don't, by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. It's called NDW Generations. It's a, it's a, like a board card wrestling game where you, almost like Pokemon. I, I've never played Pokemon, but there's wrestling cards. You put your, you put it down. There's a card called the Cheese, and the cool thing about this is. It's called The Cheese, but you're from Bradford, Pennsylvania, which is a half an hour away from me, <laughs> where Zippo Lighter or Zippo Lighters, right? Where Zippo oh, Lighters okay. are made, and I graduated college. Holy shit, round that off. I, dude, I got to play this game now. I, like it. I need to buy it all. I do. I, there, there's like four series, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, this is, and this was five minutes before I called you. I, it just came up. I'm like, what is this? So I'm just scrolling. And the wife's like, what are you looking at? And I'm like, nothing. Because I'm FaceTiming her, tell her I'm getting ready. Blah, blah, blah. What are you looking at? Why aren't you looking at me? You're FaceTiming. I'm like, there's a wrestling game out that's got a guy already that I'm going to interview tonight. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's got no idea that he's in this game and he's from Bradford. She's like, zero. I, she's like, I thought he's from Florida. I'm like, he is. But the game says. <laughs> <laughs> NDW Generations. Got it. Look it I up. Will, I will. I will look that up, and I will. I'll be getting some cards from them. But that's a. That's a. That's awesome. I. Yep. I love that type of concept for that sort of. Thing. And the cool thing is, it's you weren't sure if you wanted to wrestle. You talked to a couple of buddies. They got you into the wrestling. Now it's the whole freaking story. It really is. <laughs> Check it out. All right. Full circle. So what are your three favorite cheeses? And you have to get me on one of them. Of course, I, I like the generics. I'm a provolone. I'm a baby Swiss. Mm-hmm. But tell me some of your favorite cheeses and sell me on them. Okay. So um, my current – because cheeses are – any food or movie or music or whatever for me is like – it. it comes to mood right it comes to how i'm feeling at that particular time and right now the steady favorite is havarti 
Um, okay. If you if you go, you can go to a nice cheese store. Or you can go and get it as cheaply as you want, but it's a nice, soft, nutty cheese, and especially if it's if it's molded with dill, like some Havarti dill. It's like the perfect, just gently fragrant, awesome cheese. You know, like it works well with just about anything, and nobody talks about why it works well with just about anything. I don't know why, but it works. I mean, it could come down to personal preference, but that's number one right now. Um, number two is the camembert. Um, it's the, like the what? Camem is spelled C A M. I think it's E M B E R T. So some some say camembert, like it's French, oh, it's or fancy. some say yes, yeah, <laughs> it's the most bougie cheese I like, and. Uh, some say camembert, and I'm a I'm a simpleton. Of, I'm going to say camembert. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm white trash, so I'm going to say camembert. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so that that's number two, and then honestly, dude, and it, you know this is you're you're going to be like ah, this is a usual suspect, but it really is. You cannot. This is a fundamental thing. And when I come out to the ring, I throw these and there are real cheeses like this. A lot of people say that's not even cheese, but the, the singles, most widely known as craft singles, it's processed cheese product. But there are some some brands that make it with real cheese. Now, those are a, quite a bit more expensive than your, you know, your 329 package of your mark as cheese. cheese yeah yeah like um craft please sponsor me but, um <laughs> touche or we'll whoever have to, we'll have to tag you in that <laughs> yeah whoever whoever wants to sponsor me because like i'm i throw out so many pieces of cheese to the audience whenever i walk out um are people yeah, eating the, it then are people like eating it brother they are not only are they eating it they are bringing it up to me, and they want me to sign fucking it. Fucking signed. Sorry, I'm swearing, but that's <laughs> it's. I love it. Don't get me wrong. No, I agree, I but that's so. What, love it. What are you gonna? It's so strange. You're just gonna keep it in the fridge the rest of your life. When you, I'm gonna go morbid here. A little child at the age of ten is gonna get the cheese to sign a piece of cheese. Now it's gonna sit in the fridge until the kid's ninety. That's eighty years later. Their grandchildren are like, what the hell is this? It says cheese on it. No shit, it's cheese. Throw it out. Well, I love here, you. Here, but yeah. <laughs> here's the here's the here's the other thing though. It's you can you don't even have to set it in the fridge. Well, no, you, you do don't set it inside. Yeah, it's, and it'll it'll be fine. as long as it doesn't melt. Uh, it, it just it's okay. And you, I've I've put those things in the back of my. <laughs> truck because i all i also do this and just a disclaimer for responsibility here because i have i do have a lot of young fans right um the, the kids seem to love the cheese and i'm i'm very appreciative and grateful for their parents bringing them out to the shows but when i throw the cheese out on my entrance and on my exit i always make sure that those kids see me with a bucket after when it's time to you know clear Clean out for the show and break down the chairs and all that stuff as one does as an independent pro wrestler. I, I always make sure that I walk around and pick up the, the slices of cheese and make sure that those kids see me because you don't want to teach kids that littering is okay. And um, that this wasting stuff is okay. Cause to be honest, there are pack, there are times where like I'll, I'll repackage some cheese and I'll put <laughs> on there. Do not eat. In, in this was an tossed out last point. night, and the other wrestling <laughs> was at. But there are some people that just like they take their life into their own hands, and they're just like, you know what? I'm going to eat this, and I'm like, I can't stop you because you're a human. You have free will. So if you want to ignore that, go ahead. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. I have to ask this because it just popped. Are you regular? Like, do you eat that much cheese? Do you have normal bowel movements? Like, I just see you just pounding cheese. <laughs> How many times I have do. you been asked that? I quite, quite honestly, you know, there's on, on the special occasion. To answer your question, yes, okay. I'm very regular. <laughs> My wife would say I'm too regular, but um, the 
<laughs> I, whether I walk out with a delicious cheese tray, a charcuterie board, because I also sell um, charcuterie boards that with my logo on them. Uh, if I walk out and I've got like fancy cheeses, whether it's those cheeses or whether it's craft singles or something else, yes, sir, I am pounding the cheese. <laughs> it, but it's like it. It. I think it's now. It's such a part of my gut biome oh, that, like, imagine. if I didn't, yeah, if I didn't eat cheese, I would. You probably need to go to just like detox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you imagine like what are you in here for well i'm detoxing off a of cheese haven't had a it's singles like, in an hour man <laughs> some poor person is like getting off of you know some kind of substance abuse journey they were just on and they're you know going through all this spiritual stuff and i'm like i'm here because uh i haven't had enough cheese in the past 24 hours oh, you're really looking for that government <laughs> cheese now <laughs> breaking into wawa's or whatever convenience store you have down there wide-eyed <sighs> <sighs> give me your cheese <laughs> dude you can have all the money no i just want the cheese shred it <laughs> All right. Um, wrestling has changed since we were little and we watched it. And this is kind of a couple harder hitter questions. Um, to the good, some still to the bad. What do you see in wrestling that still needs to change, though? You know, one of those stigmas that are like, oh, man, because you we talked about it at the beginning. People are like, oh, you're in wrestling. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, they're thinking of something. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are some things that are stigmatized. Um, I honestly wish I, 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 what I don't like, and I've heard people say this before and it doesn't, these sort of things don't bother me that honestly, when someone says this, they say it's the male soap opera. Um, that doesn't bother me because that's just an opportunity for me to explain or talk about something I'm super passionate about with another human being. However, it does have this, this stigmatic, this is this stigmatization or what, whatever I'm making up words now, but those are basically all, can crush our nation knows that Mark usually <laughs> use those words too. So you're good. <laughs> but the, uh, the stigma that comes along with wrestling that it's a male soap opera type thing. And it's, and it's to not, it's not art. It's just cheap. But when wrestling is, does something artful, um, and, and it creates a storyline that lasts, we have them, we can reference them. We've referenced, reference sting reference nitro, the NWO we've referenced, yeah. Uh, different things in wrestling and even my silly little character, like things like that, that have happened in wrestling are these like great comedic achievements. In my opinion, yeah. um, Colt Cabana is a, like a, he is one of the shining lights in wrestling that should be shined on more. And people can take it as, as like, a, a, as we have, a, a, you have a fellow artist. If you're an artist, you have fellow artists among you in wrestling. There's just a little bit more of a physicality to it. It's not like not everybody that watches wrestling is a meathead. Not everybody that watches wrestling are men. There's plenty. There's amazing uh, women's wrestling that you can watch and you can get involved in those storylines and appreciate those people and those characters and all the wonderful things that wrestling brings to the table. The, it's just to me, the thing that needs to change, and this doesn't need, it can't, it doesn't need to change from within. Cause when you're a wrestling fan and you're passionate about wrestling, you already know this, right? You already know that wrestling is art, right? That pro wrestling is art. And it's not just for the sake of art. It is an art in and of itself. So it's just the outward view. And so I think that, to help change that stigma stigmatized part of what we do is to kind of try and be not like a pusher, but more of an ambassador and just be like, yeah, I know what you're saying, man. Um, uh, here's what I like and here's what we do. And it's, it's, it's almost like sales kind of, but at the same time, it's like, it's just 
some people just like, well, if they don't know about it, then, you know, I don't really care to try and explain it to them, you know, market it, market it as a a fan. Like exactly. Have your, yeah. What's your uh, favorite match that you would show a non wrestling fan? My mine is going to be Steamboat Savage WrestleMania three. I nothing will top that for me. If there's not a wrestling fan, I'm gonna like watch this for just this. And if you don't get engulfed in it, you really don't like it. You're not going to understand the Colt Cabana stuff, the NWO stuff. This is this is the high point of wrestling for me. What would be that match be for you? Well, you know, to me, I would go with something. Uh, Something from uh, the territory days. I'd go with a match with, from uh, Dusty Rhodes and like Harley Race. Yeah. Like go pick out something from that feud. Yeah, because that again, that was like the pinnacle of like territory wrestling in terms of you know characterization. And because Dusty Rhodes, if Sting wasn't my absolute all time favorite, Dusty Rhodes would be there because they're at times they're neck and neck. And, and the, the American cheese is obviously <laughs> I knew a that blatant rip off. Yeah. You know, like it's obviously a, a blatant rip off, but it's, it's not again, it's not I'm not stealing. I just I adore Dusty Rhodes. And if you can if you listen to the hard times promo, I wouldn't even say it's necessarily a match. But show yeah. a non wrestling fan who's just has their mind cracked open just enough to listen. Show them the hard times promo and the the passion, the the flamboyancy, the the uh, just the hand gesturing and the the accent and the nature of what Dusty Rhodes is saying to the TV to the common man, woman, child. That if that passion doesn't resonate with that person, then that person person is passionless, and they can go back to watching I don't know like how it's made or something. And I actually like what, how it's made. <laughs> I but, like how it's you know, made. Don't you? <laughs> I, I I actually love how it's made. So that's a bad example, but you know you get what I'm saying. Days of our lives. Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> um, I would I would show that because there's so much art and passion and true thing, and that's the wonderful thing about pro wrestling is that. We live in this intersection of entertainment that mixes all different kinds of entertainment, comedy, athleticism, uh, drama, you know, spooky stuff. Uh, it's like I used to work at a blockbuster video and like I have a logo that's I call it the Cheesebuster video logo. Yep. But it's just instead of the thing, it's instead of the ticket, it's a bit it's a piece has been bitten out of it and it just says the cheese and so i pride myself on that on that little background that's not one of the jobs that i had that was a a dead-end job and i was living for somebody else that was that was one for me when i was in my 20s and that was an amazing job so fun and i actually learned a lot but we are basically (laughs) i have to digress because i know i'm taking up a lot of time here to explaining something i'm super passionate about but Wrestling is like going in, being able to go into a blockbuster. It's more digital now, but when you could go in and you can choose from the, you can choose horror, you can choose sci-fi, you can choose comedy, you can choose drama, you can choose award-winning stuff, and you can choose the indie film. Wrestling is a blockbuster. It really is. So, I love that. You you gotta embrace that, and 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 if you're and and instead of dismissing people that want to say, Oh, that I don't know who that is. And lo- some people love to do it. Just get on your nerves. You know, they're like, Oh yeah, I have no idea what that is. You know, that obnoxious character, like, okay, well, if they're not interested, then you move on. But if they're, if they're engaged in conversation with it, you can explain it. You don't have to, you market it. You don't have to sell it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Agreed. So I, I agreed wholeheartedly. That was that, better put that, than I would have put it. So yes. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. It's just I go based on the feel. <sighs> how much wrestling today do you get to watch? Like, are you fully engulfed in WWE, AEW, Impact, New Japan, anything like that? Or, I tr- or are you just, I'm not saying hanging out with your friends, doing your 
wrestling? Is it just that, mm-hmm. and that covers your need? Um, partially. So I do like through osmosis. I watch a lot, and and I always know kind of what I have my finger on the pulse of what kind of going on for the most part through you know WWE, AEW, um, Impact. MLW, New Japan, all that stuff. I typically know what storylines are what, um, and the all the behind the scenes stuff that's available. Like it just happens. Like I'm just I live in that world. But I don't I don't watch every single episode. I, I DVR so I can watch some a lot of my friends because I have you know friends that are on AEW uh, and. Uh, that were, have done the AEW dark matches and people who have um, have performed on there. So I would say I watch AEW more than anything right now, but that doesn't mean that I'm... I Jay Lethal is on there, so you damn now. well better. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Jay Lethal. Absolutely. It's, it's Jay Lethal. I absolutely have to. And he, he always laughs. I tell him, like, I say it like an idiot because I kind of am. <laughs> But I say, hey, man, you're doing a great job out there. And he just laughs. He's like, okay, cheese. <laughs> he, he, he hates you. Like, he hates <laughs> you. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's funny. I can, I can, I, I'm just a big, dumb, redneck idiot. And he absolutely loves that. <laughs> a guy from New Jersey, like, he doesn't, he doesn't like, those, t- the two usually don't mix. Mix at but all. No. W- we, we get along and it's, and it's really great. But, um, but yeah, that's, I, I, I do, I, I try and stay current with everything. Yeah. It's tough. It, it really is. It, and if somebody tells you, Hey, I watch all 58 hours of professional wrestling that's on TV and I watch, you know, Indies across the board too. Cool. I, I am jealous of you. I'd like to do that, but I have a wife and a family I need to take care of. And I don't live in my mom's basement. So right. That's Mark and, saying and, that it's not the cheese, but yes. No, I I get it. I mean, it, honestly, think about back when we were kids, man. We were, you, you'd grab oh. at any kind of wrestling that you could get at any time, and now it's more content than ever, ever. before. And my my favorite thing is discovering new indies, it, it, like yep. it, not just working on you know like, but like discovering a new promotion. Uh, IWTV is amazing. Uh, yeah. What's the other one? Title match is awesome. Like, subscribe to. I'll get rid of. Ca- I'll get rid of cable and just have those. But of course, my family would rather watch. You know, Bluey or whatever. By the way, you'll find out. <laughs> Sixteen. He doesn't watch Bluey. Not that I know of, but still, yeah. That's what everybody tells me is Bluey is in my future, and I'm like, what does that mean? And they're like, oh, you'll know. <laughs> oh, you'll know. My. <laughs> My wife has her godchild is six, and that's yeah, we're engulfed in that when she comes over. Oh boy, you'll love it. Oh my gosh, blue cheese, <laughs> blue cheese. <laughs> All right, you're gonna get this, and uh, well, because I gotta give you your time to talk about merch where you're gonna be, your socials, and all that. But I asked this, and I put the little twist on it I want your dream match, I want where, I want who, and I want the stipulation. Very pressing on this one because this is one of my favorite questions. So, and when you say that, and, I, and I've listened before, but I just want to make sure I'm clear because I've never been in your hot seat. But you, when you say that, you want my dream match with my own opponent, or like the dream match of two people I'd really want to see? No, your own opponent, and it can be. Listen, it's his dream. If it's Stinger, Surfer Stinger, cool. If it's Dusty, God love him. It's Dusty. It is his fantasy. Book your match that you wish that you could have in your lifetime. Well, I mean, you've. I just gave them away. You I kinda, know. <laughs> you kind, yeah, you kind of said it. Like, uh, it, but it, it, essentially, it would be because I because I can't. The way I'd want it to be is, I'd I'd want it to be Dusty Rhodes, and I'd want it to be in, um. And an ag hall, some kind of 4-H center that's like old school territory thing uh, with old school territory, uh, you know, like everything. I'd want it to be set if if we have in a perfect world where I can go in the DeLorean and set this match up. 
I would go back to like 1982 and like meet up at an, at uh, the armory in Tampa with Dusty Rhodes. Nice. And I would I would work him and we'd work each other in just a, no crazy stipulations on the match, but what this would be would be you know Dusty saying. Hey, this the American cheese, baby. After the end of the match, of course, and kind of you know, passing that southern flamboyant torch to me to go off and create my own stuff, and you know, be be kind of part of his legacy. This is like extreme crazed fan lunatic fantasy stuff I'm talking about here. So man. you've thought about but, it. So, you, <laughs> some people, so some people are like, oh man, I don't know. I could say this one. I could go, do you know who this person is? You have this written down on Moses's templates, clearly. <laughs> Brother, I could rattle off like 80 of these to you and still keep going. because, But, but ultimately, it, it would have to be as much as I love Sting, because I <laughs> I love Sting so much, I just want to be on a tag team with him. Darby Allen, you have no idea. Maybe he does. Well, Sting's no not, Sting's not doing are. singles anymore, he said. So you would be a perfect tag for him. I, I think so. I would love to do a, a like, look, I would, I would turn into, like, the biggest... You're Fandrew, already marking I out. Care. I hear it in your voice. You're already, it's cracking. I, oh, my God, Sting! It's like I meeting Taylor care. Swift. I don't care who calls me a mark, who calls me this, whatever. I will. I do not care. Sting is my absolute favorite, and Dusty Rhodes is right there with him. But if I could have a match with anybody, it would be Dusty Rhodes, and I would take every elbow and and work every every gimmick in that match just the exact way he tells me to, and and just as long as at the end of that match I could somehow muster the the charisma to do as much as he did in the ring every time he got in, you know, and, and he, the, the, in a perfect world at the end, the match would end with him basically giving me his blessing to say that I'm the American cheese and uh, move on from there. I mean, like I, that's my, that's my ultimate dream. If, if we lived in that type of world, I love it. All right. This is your hot spots. This is your time. You have merch. Where can we buy it? What are your socials? And where are we going to see you in the next couple weeks? Okay, so um, you can follow me uh, on social media platforms. You can follow me on Twitter at the Cheese PW. You can follow me on Instagram at the Cheese Pro, and you can follow me and like me on Facebook under the Cheese Pro Wrestling. And um, I, I have a pro wrestling tea store, but I do have a, uh, a, a I'm migrating some things to another site with a, a, a really good friend of mine and business partner. It's called uh, Devoted Brand Clothing. Uh, I am going to be the exclusive wrestler for Devoted Brand Clothing, uh, devotedbrand.com. Uh, and I, the cheese is going to be up there soon. This is an exclusive. I'm dropping wow. this with you right now. Nice. Um, so I I was uh, I partnered with a with another website for a long time, but they're they're kind of going in another direction. So I'm now partnering with Devoted Brand um, and my friend Michael, who's been just an absolute saint at supporting me and all this. There's a there's an amazing. I put it out on my Facebook page earlier. There's an amazing cheese hat that's coming out. That's got the cheese buster logo on it. It's going to be insane. And there are some really cool designs for shirts. Cause I got designs for days, brother. Um, right. Your cheese. You should be able to roll <laughs> rack off five or 10 a year. If not just, brrr, you know, you're, you're a store of yourself. It's so fun. It's one of the funnest, the most fun things that I do. And, um, but yeah, I, I drop I drop the uh, merch uh, stuff here. I also do. I didn't talk about this because I was blabbering on about other <laughs> things. But I I also do trivia. So there's trivia with the cheese. You can follow me on Facebook on under trivia with the cheese. And um, I so I do that a couple of nights a week. That's a really fun time. Anybody who's in um, St. Pete and and Tampa Bay region, come out and see me. Um, 
but uh, but yeah, there's some big things, big announcements coming. Um, I've got you know I've got shows throughout this month on um, the 28th. Uh, Classic Wrestling Association from Florida down in Arcadia, Florida. But the two biggest things that I want everybody to take away from this, and if you can come travel to Florida, it would totally be worth it. Even if you came all the way from Pennsylvania, there are two shows that I really want everybody that listens to your podcast to know about. And one is Classic Wrestling Association from Florida. It's going to be in Arcadia. It's the DeSoto County Fair. And people say, oh, it's a fair show. You don't want to go to the fair shows. Well, let me tell you something, brother. I knew you that want to go to this fair show <laughs> because this show is going to be a very, very, very special show on Friday, February the 10th at Soto County Fair. We're going to have none other than Jay Lethal. And what? Jay Lethal Jay is Lethal. going to be. Jay Lethal. This Jay is Lethal. A, this is another this is another exclusive for you. Jay Lethal is going to be teaming with the cheese. We're going to have Lethal Cheese up in the house. So, we're going to be Lethal Cheese is going to be the tag team of the night and we're facing off of a couple of other chuckleheads who are getting in there and wanted to attack me behind the scenes and I got a hold of my pal Jay Lethal and he says, "Hey, let's we're going to do this." And so we're doing that Friday, February 10th. Uh, also there will be Bushwhacker Luke. He's going to be doing a meet and greet. And who knows, he may even mix it up in the ring. So come on out for that one. And then on February 11th uh, in Melbourne, Florida, for Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling, there's a, the, the card is already stacked for that show. That is a huge show. There's going to be a lot of, for, for an independent wrestling show, this is one you really don't want to miss if you can be in Florida during that time. It's on the opposite coast from me, but it's worth the drive. It's there. And Eric Bischoff's going to be on that show. Jerry Briscoe's uh, uh, going to be on that show. Um, his son, Wes Briscoe. Uh, there, there's countless names that are going to be on this show. Louis, my buddy Luigi Primo is going to be on the show, which leads into the match that I'm in. It's going to be myself, Luigi Primo, and Bushwhacker Luke versus, I can't even say their, their tag team name without uh, laughing, but it's Jerry Swirls and El Ridiculoso and Techno Destructo <laughs> of War. So this is like... That's what I love right there. This is multiverse, multiverse, multiverse that has like folded in on itself and the whole entire wrestling world is going to be on its knees for this show. So if you come to Florida for two, for, and you have any time and it's around the 10th or the 11th, go to one or both of these shows. If you can go to them, because the, it's, it's going to be, and people use this loosely, but I'm going to use it with pride and proper. It is going to be absolutely epic. I I agree. I agree. I need to figure stuff out. One, you know, Jerry Swirls. Uh, he's a can crusher alum. Yeah. Luke. No, I know Luke. I know you, Luigi. I'd love to have on the show. Guar, yeah. Guar. It's Guar for the love of yeah. God. <laughs> right. And who knows? I don't know. I'm I'm like I'm gonna have to load up on cheese because that guy Techno Destructo is gonna be rolling in with some kind of crazy, insane gadget gimmick that is probably gonna have to like. Yeah. I don't know how he's gonna get it to us. <laughs> at, at Bischoff being I, this is this is an epic show in the making. I'm pumped. It absolutely is, man. And, and it, ARW has 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 been really good to me. They've given me a lot of really great and, and interesting, funny, and just like fulfilling opportunities. And the same with CWA as well. So those are two independent uh, outlets that I really hope that people will dial into. Honey, if you're listening to this and you made it this far, airline tickets, cash in some year, <laughs> whatever. We have family down there in Orlando, so we can figure out 
sleeping on porches and stuff. So yeah, we're all right with yeah. that. It's just a. Uh, this will be the first time she's ever flown. By the way, she she hates flying, and we're not bringing a oh, Jeep Wrangler twenty four hours down from Pennsylvania. <laughs> <clears throat> no, even though I would, but yeah. All right, did I miss anything? You want to bring up anything else? We need to revisit this. <laughs> we d- d- we, we need gotta, to. T- we, will you have me back? I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I need I need more cheese <laughs> in my life. I need byproducts. I need whatever. <laughs> No, I, I, I greatly appreciate you having me on. I'm glad you're alive. Thanks. Uh, I, I'm glad your wife's okay. I, yeah, thank you. Uh, but it, you really are this. Uh, you know what's really ironic about this? And it's before I ever reached out to you. The one thing, because, you know, my, my daughter was born uh, just the week before Christmas. So, like, gifts getting and receiving were not on the top of our our minds because we got the greatest gift of all right right but we <laughs> the only thing that i asked for because i've been I, I drink a lot of sparkling water right like a like a metric ton of it and i have all these cans and i refuse to not recycle them they're getting recycled so in order to save space with all the cans that accumulate you know the one thing I asked for for Christmas? It's a can crusher. A can crusher, my friend. And if you go to my Instagram page, you will see you get me! that I got a, a yellow can crusher that I that's the all like it's the main thing other than my beautiful perfect daughter. It, the only other thing that I got was uh that a yellow can cr- a cheesy can crusher. So, this is fate, man. It really was. It's amazing. <laughs> Cheesy fate. <laughs> That's what you should call this episode. Right. Cheesy fate with the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I seriously, we hit it off from number one. Uh, I, I'm a dad. You'll get these moments too. I love you. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. This was a great episode. Thank you for reaching out to checking on me. We connected and, and I can't wait more. More, please. I yeah. F- figure out February, Kelly. We gotta go. Let's do it. I, I love you too, pal. I really appreciate you, man. I can't say enough good things. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a Big Daddy Cheese, the American Cheese, if you will. I had to. I had to at least once. Man, uh, friendship blown up right there. This man is a wonderful human being. You've heard me tell him I love him a couple times. I'll say it one more time. This was great. This was everything I needed and more and more and more. More cheese to come, more of everything to come. Guys, if you like this interview and you want to be part of this whole thing that we call Can Crusher Spotlight, slide into a DM on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Slide into the old-fashioned email cancrusher69 at gmail.com yeah tell me your story tell me what's up let's do this let's see if you can top cheese can anything top cheese I don't know we'll have to find out remember guys just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things it's called the garbage can not a garbage cannot make sure you tell your loved ones you love them because you never know